Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, Kahala, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shabbat, Hashem, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters, the Akwat who listen and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new fruit, the new believers, the new viewership coming into this thing. Just back with another lesson. And it's just more of an excitation, just uh, dealing with the times that we're in. We're in the last days. Even people that don't necessarily have a connection or a belief in the Bible can even consider that the things that are going on in the earth as we know it, this pattern of behavior, you know, it can't sustain itself, man. That's why I love when it says, and when you read in Matthew 24, matter of fact, I'm going to jump there real quick. I'm going to jump to Matthew 24, and then I'll come back to 1 Peter 4, um, just to help with a talking point. This is uh, Matthew, St. Matthew 24, and um, I'll start at 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And that backs up uh, Daniel, the 12th chapter. That's the time that we're coming into now, man. A day of tribulation and trouble that has not been since the world began. Okay? That's the time that we're coming into now, man. I believe through the Spirit it's going to happen in my so-called lifetime. Okay? I hope so. But it says, verse 22, And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And it seems like everybody is saying the same things, man. Man, these days is going by fast as hell, man. Here it is. It felt like maybe only like a few weeks to a month ago, you know, it was 2024, just the beginning of 2024. And here it is. We're already uh, like a quarter way through 2024. It's already March. So these days are flying by, man. It says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the Most High is shortening up the days for the elect's sake, man. So we don't have to bear just the, the, the brunt of all of this wickedness and this madness that's going on, man. You know? Because the, the quicker that we get through this particular uh, setup in this current wicked world, the quicker the kingdom of heaven gets established on earth. Okay? But going back. Uh, well, I'm going to go back to First Peter, the fourth chapter, and the seventh verse. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. So that's why we should wisely consider our behavior, man, you know, because the end of all things is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Salvation is at hand. The destruction of Babylon the Great is at hand. Okay? So there's a lot to consider in the times that we're in, man, you know? There's a time for everything under the sun, for every purpose under the heaven, like it says in Ecclesiastes, you know. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. So it says, be, be ye therefore sober. And that doesn't there accept Salaki. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, not drinking alcohol because it is lawful to drink alcohol in moderation, of course. But it's, it's more so talking about being sober minded not being drunken off the philosophies of Babylon, the great America, man. Keeping your eye single on your main priority and serving the Lord. Offending less. Putting the brotherhood in the, in, the, in the ministry first, man. It says, be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And right now we're in a time where you should pray more than ever, man. That's why the scripture says, pray without ceasing. We're supposed to allow our, our prayers to pierce the clouds, man, because the times that we're coming into, we're going to need an abundant amount of mercy. So we should be praying that the Lord cover us with the tender mercies of, the, of David, being the house of David. First Peter 4 and 8, and here's really the point I wanted to kind of go into the lesson. It says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. So above all things, you know, of course, praying, you know, being sober-minded, keeping your eyes single, being circumspect, measure the, measuring the time diligently in itself, 
just basically paying attention to what's going on so you won't be caught off guard. So the day of the Lord won't catch you as a thief in the night. Okay? It says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And when you go into that word charity in the Greek, it means agape, agape love, man. And greater no love than uh, a man lay down his life for his, his friends. That was Yahweh Shah said. Yahweh Shah said, you know, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. Because you can hang all the commandments on that right there. I'm loosely paraphrasing, man. That's the greatest commandment to showing brotherly love, man. Because the brother, the brotherhood is going to be heavily important. It's going to be heavily needful in the time that we're coming into, man. We're going to have to heavily re rely on one another, okay? And we're going to have to rely on one another to all be in the spirit, to sacrifice, man, to basically uh, wean those selfish tendencies out right now, man, while we still have that time of grace. I'll read 1 Peter 4 and 8 again. It says, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. So that's clear to the point right there. It says, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. And we all have sins that are needing of covering, man. Whether it's sins we committed in our past, present, and future. Because we're, we're still uh, in this sinful flesh. We don't have the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts yet. So we're going to sin. So basically having that fervent charity... It puts us in a position to have a, a covering from that sin, man. Okay? It says, use hospitality one to another without grudging. And that's a big thing right now, or a big thing just in, in general, man, because that's how you show charity and, f and fervent brotherhood, you know, by being hospitable. Whether it means you may have to open up your place for brothers to congregate and fellowship, you know, or whatever the case may be, man, a brother might come from out of town. You may have to put him up. A brother, you know, he might get changed to a lower state. He may lose his, his, his means to earn, and he may need a place to stay. You know, so we're coming into those times, man. Evictions all throughout the U.S. are going up in record numbers, man. So this, this brotherhood is going to be a covering and a refuge for the men of the Lord in the day of all manner of trouble that's to come to this earth as we know it. But I'm going to go to another scripture. This is uh, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And uh, I'll start at verse 2. It says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, which faith is a gift, the fact that the Most High gave us the gift of faith, and he revealed his secrets unto us, that we can prophesy, that we can say, his will, that's going to happen before it happens, man, that's a gift. It says, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So you can have all of these different gifts to prophesy, understand the mysteries and knowledge and have faith, but without charity is nothing, man. You don't have nothing without charity. Because just like I read in First Peter, the fourth chapter, that's above all. Having fervent charity, that's what we're supposed to have above all, okay? It says, and though I bestow all my goods to the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. So this just emphasized further how much value that the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, placed on charity. Okay, it says, verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself is not puffed up. I'll read it in the NLT. Uh, and I'll start in verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4 in the NLT version. It says, love is patience. Because when you go into the word charity, like I said earlier, it, it goes into agape love. Okay? It says love or charity is patient. And patience means to suffer. Sometimes you may have to suffer your brother, man. You know? I know brothers been going into how, you know, you don't realize 
how much you need mercy until it's time for you to, to need mercy. You don't understand how important it is to be merciful until you actually need mercy yourself. So we're going to have to be merciful to one towards another, man. You know, you're going to have to bear some of your brother's burdens. Even, of co- even though, of course, we all have to uh, carry our own cross, we all have to give diligence to make our own call and election, sure. But sometimes you have to suffer your brother, man, in this thing, man. And it says a brother or a friend is born for adversity. It says love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. And that's not the spirit of the Most High and His Son, man, being jealous, boastful, proud. You're supposed to have the spirit of humility. As our greatest example today, Yahweh Shah showed towards us, man. It says love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. You got to consider your brother's uh, feelings, how he views things, man. You got to see Yahweh Shah, your brother, you know. It says it does not demand its own way. And that's a big thing I know for me myself. That's why the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 13, examine yourself whether ye be in the faith. Because you're your biggest enemy in this thing, man. We sometimes all get in our own way because we want what we want when we want it. But there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger thing that we, we come into, man. It says it does, it does not demand its own way. Talking about love or charity. It is, irritable, it is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. Because brothers got to get off that spirit of holding grudges, man. Especially if a brother, in all sincerity, you know, he, he y'all chopped it up, y'all had a discussion. You said you forgive the brother, then get over it, man. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but we're coming into the time, man, where if it's not like a, a sin unto a death, like adultery or, or a major offense in the spirit, man, or blasphemy, or blasphemy of, the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, it's certain things brothers are going to have to be prepared to let go. Or it's going to hinder your walk going forward, man. You're not going to be able to press towards the mark of your high calling by holding grudges and holding record of wrongdoing. But it's going to come a time we all going to need mercy, man. And mercy rejoices over judgment. It says, it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. It says, love never gives up never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And I thought that was important right there. It says, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. So true love, man, is going to endure through every circumstance, whether we up, whether we down, man. Okay? We are going to have to be prepared to suffer our brother and remain uh, charitable, remain in the spirit to love that brother through all circumstances, man. Okay? Because it's literally going to be us against this world. Because most of this world is walking in gross darkness and we have the light. We've been enlightened through this word, through Yahweh Shai. So that's my quick message. You know, I just wanted to just emphasize the importance of charity and how important uh, mercy is going to be because charity, it covers a multitude of sins. So, Lord willing, it's edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.